Hey guys, Pete here. Like a lot of people, I started watching the show Game of Thrones before I'd even heard of the books. In truth, I probably would have never read the books if it wasn't for the show, because fantasy, other than The Lord of the Rings, just wasn't something that I would go out and find. I started watching Game of Thrones when Season 2 was going on, because a friend of mine told me that he didn't think he would like it when he heard what it was about, but once he started watching, he couldn't stop. I started binging at that point and ended up catching up before the season two finale aired, which was, you know, I watched 19 episodes in like six or seven days. Ever since then, I've existed in this continual waiting period for the next episode, so I decided to pick up the books to read during the downtime. This will be a short video on why I think everyone who likes the show should read the Song of Ice and Fire series, and it will be spo as spoiler-free as possible. I try not to include anything that gives away storylines regardless of where you're at in the show, so unlike a lot of my other videos, you don't have to be caught up to actually watch this. I try to go beyond the most obvious reasons like reading is good for you and that books are better because I think we all kind of know those things to be true. There might be some exceptions to the rule, but I, I can't think of anything that was based based on a popular book that was better than actually reading the book itself. With all that out of the way, let's jump right into the Number one, now is the perfect time. Since we know that season seven is delayed, that it's gonna be shorter with only seven episodes, and that season eight, which will be the series final season, will be shorter still, now is the time to start reading. Remember, the show has basically already moved past most of the storylines from the book, so you won't be spoiling anything. If you are caught up in the show, you don't have to worry about ruining the ending, and in fact, it will actually happen in the show before the last book will come out. Number two, it doesn't ruin the show. For me, the books only made the show more interesting. There were things that didn't quite add up that immediately made sense when I read the books. If you're worried that reading the books might take the fun out of watching the show, I just can't really see how that would happen. There is a faction of hardcore book readers who freak out about the show and sort of live to bash it, but if you already are a fan of the TV show, you can easily look at them as two different things. As mentioned, the books are better, as is almost always the case, but the show is actually really good at some things too. Everything you like about the show is in the books, and you get everything else that is on this list as a bonus. Number three, point of view chapters. The first thing I noticed that I really liked about the Song of Ice and Fire books compared to the TV show Game of Thrones was that the chapters are all written from the point of view of different characters. For example, you have Bran, Tyrion, Ned, Caitlin, Daenerys chapters, and so on. Instead of an all-knowing narrator who tells us what's happening, we hear the story from the different characters' perspectives, and we hear their thoughts along the way. Number four, more characters. As the Game of Thrones TV show goes on and it reaches its series finale, the showrunners have had to cut some storytelling corners. This is understandable, so I'm not going to, write, to like whine about it, but one of the things that happens is that they choose to merge storylines together. So a character we see on the show might be based on two or three from the books, which is not as good for obvious reasons. If you think the characters are interesting on the show, trust me, they are just as cool and there are a lot more of them in the books. Plus, beyond the characters you don't know, the ones you do know are much more complex in the books. Some of my favorite characters from the books are barely in the show or not in it at all. Number five, history. The first thing I realized when I went back to rewatch the shows after reading the books was just how much I didn't understand the historical significance of anything that was going on. Now you might think this is a fantasy show that is entirely made up, so that doesn't matter, but what's really insane is that the history of Westeros itself goes back 8,000 years. There is a large amount of references to an event or a character from the past that drives what's going on at the moment, and the history is expertly woven into everything. There is even a giant book called The World of Ice and Fire that outlines most everything that happened in this world before the events of the books and the TV show. George R. R. Martin pulls a lot from real world history as well, so at times the books almost read like historical fiction. Think about house histories with sigils and words, lines of succession for centuries of rulers, and detailed maps for most of a planet. Number six, scale. Game of Thrones probably has one of the largest budgets of any TV show in history at this point, and they do a really good job with it. Even so, there are so many things they have, they just have to leave out. Budget constraints will always lose out to your imagination, and the scale this world George R. R. Martin built is massive. Number seven, theories. Since we get the story from the point of view of different characters who themselves have incomplete information, we end up with a lot to try to figure out. A bunch of the big mysteries can be solved with the information provided, and there's a huge culture of people who break every little detail down on sites like Westeros.org, Reddit, and obviously a bunch of YouTube creators as well. 
The amount of different theories that grow up around the stories in the books and what might happen in the next one is so huge, I can't really think of anything to compare it to. I mean, obviously you have like the Star Wars universe and things like that, but it's just as big. Number eight, plots, magic, and religion. These are three items that just don't come off as well in the show. In the books, the bad guys have reasons for what they do, and the depth of their plotting is much more interesting in the books. This goes for magic and religion as well. Remember that magic actually is a part of the world the story is set in. And just like our world, different cultures have created their own religions to help understand why things are the way they are. It's really hard not to get spoilery here, so I'm just going to have to leave it at that. Number 9, Dreams. Dreams play a big part in Song of Ice and Fire, and a lot of the main characters have them. Again, it's hard not to spoil the books here, so I won't get too far into it. I'll just say that if you've ever had a dream that you wondered about, or a friend of yours told you about one and you were just wondering what it meant, then you should probably go start reading the books right now. Number 10, George R.R. Martin. Obviously, it all starts and ends with George R.R. Martin, so of course he would be the top reason on the list. Westeros and the World of Ice and Fire wouldn't exist without him, and all the other things on this list are what he gave us. His writing is legitimately good and presented in a way that you have to keep going or you, or you can't wait to get back to it. And the character creation is on par with any of my other favorite authors, regardless of, you know, genre. I think what he does well is makes great characters that exist in this gray area between good and bad. The characters live in a fantasy universe that's a lot like our medieval world, but they have strengths, weaknesses, ambitions, flaws, and struggles just like we do. No one's 100% good, and I think it's likely that no one is truly pure evil either. The characters we like for heroes aren't always safe or guaranteed to win out at the end, and there's also a really good chance that what drives the story is a commentary that's bigger than just who ends up sitting on the Iron Throne. That's the top 10 reasons I can think of. So I hope that gives you something to think about if you've been on the fence about reading the books. There really are so many reasons that I can't mention because of spoilers, and I guess it wouldn't be right to not look at some of the reasons why you might not want to read the books either. Only The, th- the only one I can really think of, though, is that it's a, it's a pretty big investment of time. To date, only five of the planned seven books have been released, and it's already about four times as long as the Lord of the Rings um, trilogy. None of these are books that you could read in one or two days, but I never found myself wanting the time that I spent reading them back. They're easy to find in audiobook form too, so if reading isn't your thing or you have a long commute to work, each day that could be an option as well let me know in the comments if you've been thinking about reading them and just haven't taken the plunge yet Um, if you're like me and started reading them after you got into the show did you have a similar experience to mine if you want to talk about major plot points or characters that you like better in the books that's fine but let's add spoiler tags down there so we don't ruin uh, this for anybody else who hasn't read while we're nerding out Please like this video if you found it interesting and subscribe to my channel for more Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire videos. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.